And thanks everyone for joining us in the next of our Tiny ML Auto Machine Learning uh, Deep Dive Tutorials. Um, a few weeks ago, we had our big forum event, uh, 11 different companies all uh, participating in a, a really exciting event. You can check it out on YouTube if you haven't already seen it. Um, today, we're going to do our deep dive with Noda AI so that, uh, as we talked about in that event, uh, each company gets a chance to uh, spend a little more time, about an hour, going deeper into their auto machine learning tool, what it's uh, what it can do and everything else. So um, first, let me just do the regular introduction stuff. Uh, thank you to our Tiny Machine Learning Strategic Partners um, for committing to take Tiny Machine Learning to the next level together. Obviously, uh, all of us in the Auto Machine Learning Working Group think auto machine learning uh, is a kind of key enabling technology to making tiny ML solutions really productive. And all of these companies um, are uh, really kind of a key part of building this whole ecosystem and this whole uh, industry. Um, if you want to learn more and keep up, if you haven't already, please join uh, tiny machine learning meetup groups and uh, the LinkedIn community. Uh, there's always lots of new and exciting content like this event uh, going on, and uh, you, you, you don't want to miss any of it. Um, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube, the Tiny ML YouTube channel as well. Uh, this video, as well as, um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the forum event a few weeks ago and all of the other Tiny ML auto machine learning deep dive events will be posted on the Tiny ML YouTube channel. So don't miss anything there. And we have a couple more uh, auto ML deep dive tutorials. We've, we've had one already. Uh, this is our second. We have two more coming up in the next few weeks in July. Um, the webcasts are always start at 8 a.m. Pacific. And so, you know, make sure and go click those links. Uh, they're all available on uh, tinyml.org and sign up and make sure and uh, see the ones you're interested in. Uh, just another reminder that the TinyML uh, EMEA in Europe um, in Cyprus event is coming up in October. Uh, call for pay presentations is open till August 1st. So uh, if, you have, if you're interested, if you'd like to present or just attend, make sure and check out those links. And uh, finally, uh, just about ready to hand it over to our speaker. Wanyu Eric Kong is a research engineer at Noda AI, managing the agility of the AI software team. His in areas of interest is the substantial interaction between both between groups and within groups of individuals crossing domains such as operations, AI software engineering, product management, and business development, aiming to improve the quality of dynamics of the team. So Eric, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Hong, I'm a research engineer in Nota AI. Um, so I'm going to introduce our product. Um, it's about tiny ML to ML. It's called Netpresso is our, uh, our the product title. So let me begin. So this is a table of content. I'm going to introduce Nodotai AI and our, sol our solution in brief, brief manner. And after that, I'm going to introduce the pipeline components, the concept of pipeline, com pipeline components in automated hardware aware AI model optimization. And our product, Nespresso, is actually a family of subservices called model searcher, model compressor, and model launcher. And after the short pr brief presentation, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a tutorial session, um, which will yeah, hands-on, it's a hands-on session. So let's move on. Introduction to Nota AI. So we, Nota AI actually has founded in 19, 2015. It's been, it's been seven to eight years old. So, yeah, we are in the stage of Series B, and our premier partners, one of our premier partners is NVIDIA, and one of our main investors are LG CNS and Samsung Venture Investments. So the cumulative, invest, cumulative investment funding is 22.5 million bucks. So our global presence, so we are based in, actually we are based in Seoul, Korea, and we also have a base in the Berlin, Germany, and San Jose. Uh, San Jose in the in the states. So we have two main, mainly we have, have two types of business business models. First one is AI model optimization product. It's actually a pro, it's serviced um, on via the website currently. So it's automated software platform 
and it's for um, let me let me make it brief. We our mission is to make small AI models for small hardware, which, which is simply but not exactly the exact exact term. But let me let me repeat. We make small AI models for small hardware devices. So our customers, main customers are our um, hardware vendors like like um, Raspberry Pi or just Nano or, or that kind of ready-made hardware vendors or even you know the Renaissance, which who made a who made a microprocessors is one of our clients. So our our customers or our, our clients are hardware guys, and we are a software company. So first main issue is a main product of our service is Netpresso, is web service. And second, secondly, we also develop the to show um, our clients the our product industry effect of that, which, which means that um, if we make intelligent transportation system and driver monitoring system. Both of them contains a small AI model. When, when I say small, it's not just, it, it's not just meaning, uh, it's, it's meaning it's not just the size or a storage is small, I mean, but um, when you know that when the neural network is getting smaller, it means that gets higher inference, it, it has much faster inference speed. So when I say small AI model, it does not mean this actually, it does not, it does not mean the size, but the actually the speed and the, the kind of things rather than the, rather than the size itself. So our team nota is composed of a, around 70 to 80 people. So mainly we have a lot of people in Seoul, Korea, and about 70 to 80 percent of our our members are R and D guys. So yeah, this is the introduction of my company, our company, and I'm going to introduce the hardware aware, the concept of hardware aware AI model optimization. So when whenever you train the deep neural network in your machines, so it's, it's usually it's in server side. So we say. Um, is, is a server side, it's a trained in server side and usually it's inference, inference is measured also in the server side. But when it comes to tiny ML, when it comes to the small devices like HD devices or just Nano, Raspberry Pi or even the MCU level, very small devices, the deep neural network is trained in this very, very large servers. It's not fit, doesn't fit into the small devices. So we introduce lightweight, lightweight deep neural network models and we propose several, several different method, um, several different method to compress or searching um, small architectures for the small devices. So in former in informal way, we make small AI models for small devices. But in former statement, we make hardware aware AI model optimization. So the utility of own device AI, which is also um, the same meaning is very similar, but same meaning is tiny ML. When you think about a um, harsh environment in, for the machines, there are some certain certain scenarios that small hardwares or even the, or some machines suffer from the environment, like under the sea, on the, over the air, on the sea, or in, even in the car, the machines cannot use the bed, can, but machines cannot use the power cable or LAN cable for data transfer. That is, we call that very harsh environment for the machines. Even so, the AI models should they suppose it should run on that kind of small devices. With a which should be run on the small on on harsh environment. So that's the utility of on-device AI. And we would like to make a platform to produce small AI models, tiny AI models, which fits into the small hardware. So the challenges in AI pipe pipeline is like very, very, it's like very cumbersome from the data collection and to, and to the deployment and mainly the AI, AI researchers focus mainly on the model training and model evaluation and prediction this stage. But the problem here in tiny ML 
or small AI models. The model training is done in server side, which is, has a lot of resources. And the prediction or inference is done in the very small devices. So their environments are totally different and quite limited in the prediction stage or inference stage. So this is the situation. You train, you train the AI model on the server side, that's fine, it's good. But if you would like to use or actually deploy your AI model into small edge devices, you need to rethink about the size or the scenarios it actually works in small edge devices. So we proposed it, these three, mainly we proposed these three kind of scenarios. If you have a data set, you can use, you should start, you, you, you would like to search a small model in the very first time. So we propose model searcher. So if you, and if you have a pre-trained model, assume that if you have a pre-trained model, you may think you may um, consider how to compress a large model into a smaller one. So we, we proposed model compress, model compressor at this stage. So, and if you want to deploy a model into small devices, then you may, you may worry about how to convert and deploy into the edge devices, so we, which we use model launcher. So these three services are called Nespresso. So the Nespresso is our web service, is our main solution. It's actually a family of these three sub-services. Okay. So um, Nespresso and my pipelines. This is a Nespresso. There are five, mainly five scenarios Nespresso works. So if you have a data set, you can use model searcher and model launcher to op produce optimized hardware array IAM model. So you have actually these five types of different scenarios. Actually, model searcher and model compressor aims the same objective, actually. We both the model searcher and model compressor want the same thing. We want a small AI model for small devices, but the approach is opposite. So model compressor is a top-down approach and model searcher is bottom-up approach. So what does top-down approach means? Model compressor assumes the users to have a pre-trained model. So for the model compressor, the user unload a pre-trained model. It's like, it can be a tensile, you know, um, Keras model, or it can be a PyTorch model. It can be a mobile mobile net, or voice voice net, or ResNet, whatever. You unload a computer vision model on our model compressor without a data set. Just as model, you unload you unload a model, and the model compressor will automatically compress the AI model and return you the compressed AI model within just five minutes without the data set. So, okay, we have one chat. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So the model compressor is a top-down approach. And when I say model, model searcher is bottom-up approach, the model searcher requires the user to upload their own data set. So once the data, you, you users have data set, the users upload the, model search, the data set into the model searcher, and the model searcher produces or searches a small AI model from the data set. And that once that we have the pre-trained model from the model searcher, the model goes in the next step to, to be compressed into from by the model compressor. And if you don't have data set, or if you don't want to unload your data set to our service, you just use your, you, you just unload your model to use model compressor and model launcher. So if you have a model in the development, you can use model compressor. Or if you have already optimized model, you don't have to use model searcher and model compressor, you just model launcher. So these type of scenarios are possible for users for, to use our service. And our service is actually running, currently it's running on public and it's still free for all. So all you have to do is just register your email address and prepare your own pre-trained AI model, PyTorch, Keras model and upload it to our compressor. That's all you, you need to do. Okay, it's uh, times, okay, all 16. So let me move on just a few slides and I'm going to show you 30 minutes demos. So Nespresso actually is actually a platform to find optimal hardware or wear AI models. 
So it solves the pain points of users uh, of this. And you see the input is data set, or sometimes in, for the case of water compressor, you don't have a you don't have to unload a data set. And then this Netspresso, the outcome of Netspresso is an optimized AI model. And the point here, when you say optimized AI model, it actually means um, it actually covers the specs or the inference time or it, like, the end accuracy or MAP of HD devices. So we call it hardware aware AI model optimization. So requires a data set, target hardware and target performance is just, just the configuration. You upload the data set or your model and the model search, model searcher and compressor will give you, give you back the optimized AI model for your device. So the, the small AI model is actually, it can be run also on the cloud. Yeah, it makes sense. We, if we once we have a small, small AI, AI model which can which can be run on small devices, it also can be run on the cloud. Yeah. So we have these two types of business models. We provide a Nespresso, which is a web service of ours. You can use and you can compress and you can upload it. You can download your compressed model on your own your yourselves, or if we have some other circumstances or if we have any suffering from building AI model, for example, if you are a startup, if you're a member of startup and you are lack of your lack of resource, you got your lack of budgets and you cannot hire a lot of AI engineers in your company, uh, we are going to help you to build AI model from the scratch, very from the very scratch to the end of deployment. So contact us if you want to AI service. So, and the next thing, I'm gonna skip it very briefly. We have two types of vertical solutions, which are called GMS, driver monitoring system, and ITS, intelligent transport transportation systems. So, you know, the, in the car, the environment is very harsh. It's not a good, it's not a good condition for the machines. You know that, you know why? The, the machines in the car cannot use the, can, just use the battery powered and the machines in the car cannot use LAN cable for data transfer. So it's not a good condition for the machines, but we on device AI, we, the small AI model we produce with an espresso will work very very well in the this harsh environment. So the one example is driver monitoring system. The driver monitoring system is a, a kind of intelligence dash cam, which watches over the driver status right in the autonomous vehicle. So in autonomous vehicle, the drivers can easily lose attention because they don't drive while driving. So the dash cam, intelligent dash cam watches over your face and detects um, if your face, detects your face and eyes and mouth yarning or your head pose, something like that. So it, detects, it detects several features at the same time simultaneously and decides if, whether if you are the driver is sleeping or not. The point here is we have already published a, a Blackview dash cam. So we, we provide our solution or our web, our AI model to the dash cam company. And the point here is we can compactly, we can push, we can put uh, six to seven small AI models in just one single Raspberry Pi or just none or whatever. We can put six or seven object detection models and they can run simultaneously to detect the first model, for example, first, first model detects your bounding box, second model detects your landmarks, third model detects your head pose, fourth model detects your eye drowsiness, the fifth model detects your mouse yarning. So these three, these five or six different models run independently, mutually independently, and run simultaneously to detect your several features of your place. So that's the point in this solution. And then the last one is ITS. So intelligent transportation system. So the cars on the road can be easily crowded. So the intelligent transportation system detects the crowdedness in the, on, the, on the road. 
So if the road is crowded with the cars, it gives a longer the signal longer, or you know, or the car is not the road is not crowded, they it gives the edge device here will give the short signal, things like that. And we have uh, many use cases on rear city. And we have um, we have collaborated with the NVDS, NVIDIA series. So we have we are a partner in NVIDIAs. So let's move on. It's 22. So let's move on to the real demo. So it's not a good if I keep moving on by myself. So this is tutorial now. So we actually, we have three different services, model searcher, model compressor, and model launcher. And these are packed with the, with the same name, Netspresso. And I brought you here just a model compressor because if you, if you want to use a model compressor, it just take you five minutes and it needs you just minimum requirement. All you need to do is to register and unload your pre-trained model and get back your compressed model, that's all. But when it comes to the model searcher, I told you that model searcher is the bottom of approach and you need a data set to train and also you need a GPU resource. So it takes time to train to up to three days if it's a quick search or one to three weeks if it's advanced search in model search. Actually, it's a not it's a, the method in the new model model center is a actually a neural architecture search. So it takes time to train the model. So it's not a good fit for this short time tutorial. And the third one, model launcher, will be launched in July this year. So so that means uh, it will be launched on it will it will publicly open in mid mid of this July this year. So it's not ready for probably yet. So I brought here just motor compressor. So you can you can use just right now. So all you have to do is like visit the website compression.nespresso.ai. So once you register, assume you register, put your email and password and name and your company and small information. Yes, let me. And register and log in. You will see the this screen. And there are just few 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 options you can choose. There are several. You may see that if you once you signed up, you may see four to five simple models. But actually, I prepared the pre pre trained model here and uploaded it because um, downloading and uploading the model will take time. So. Assume you have a ResNet 15 in your Keras model. If you don't have a model ready, you just visit here, um, down left to downside, you click the model to here. Then you will see we prepare some sample models for you. There are Torch models and Keras model. And, and I brought you here the Keras model. Yeah, no. oh, sorry. Yeah, you click um, Keras Sci-Fi 100 pre-trained, and there are three mobile net, ResNet 50, which is 19, 19, three, three pre-trained models, and these are the result of the compressor. So you don't you don't need to for the compressor. So you download these three one of these three models and come back here and click compress. Actually, you upload the model. Click like model upload test model something like that, and click so it's fine. If, if you have a model, just click your model and the upload will take uh, one or two minutes to be unloaded. Okay, then click the compress. You will see there are mainly two methods you can use. First one is pruning, and second one is spatial decomposition. Actually, some of you can may have a question, why don't we have a quantization or ray sharing or other compression method? The reason, the main reason we adapted pruning and filter decomposition first is they can be used uh, without data set. 
in the compression phase. If you, if you um, for example, if you use quantization, you have to, you, you, need, a, um, you need actually a data set to, to prevent the actress, the a lot of the uh, severe actress drop. But if it comes to pruning or turker or CPD composition, you can manage the accuracy, the degree of the drop of the accuracy. So we brought here pruning and filter pruning and filter decomposition because we would we wanted to the users the minimum requirement. You don't need a data set in even in, in just just for the compression stage. You don't need a data set, and you may don't want a lot of a severe accuracy drop. So what you need to do is to unload your model. Just click the L2 known pruning as an example and select method. Okay, just move on. Just, just it, it will not take that long time. So just move on and see what, what, what will happen here. So you will see a profile of your model it's resin at 50 and I choose the L2 norm printing as a compression method. And you, you see here, these are the, you see that these are the layer wise latency. So when you see, you see, you can see the hint, which layer should be pruned in prior to the other layers. You see, these take this is, this is you, you see the layer zero here, layer zero not dot come to layer takes 36, 36, 56.33 microseconds. So it takes much, much slower, it's much slower than the other layers. So it's a hint. You may want like, you may give the printing ratio more, more than this layer like this. So when, when you give a printing ratio, there's no answer. You, what you have to do, you all you can do is a try and error, try and error, try and error, try and error. So all you have is just few hints to give some, like for example, I'm, I'm gonna I'm going to give you give the printing ratio here, um, point point two, like that. Or if you don't, if you have, if you are, if you do, if you feel not comfortable for giving you manually the printing ratio, you can use the recommendation button and they give you the recommendation for the print ratio for each layers. So let's see, let's just compress. Okay, let's just compress. Okay, let's move on, let's move on. Okay, select the model, ResNet, printing. Okay, so we have 15 to 20 minutes for the demo. So click the first layer for an experiment and I'll give you the printing ratio 0.1 and I proceed to compress. So you see the 10 credits will be used. Actually, when you sign up, when you sign up at the initial stage, you'll, you'll, you'll give you a 100 credits. So once you used, once you press just one compression bu compress button, the 10 credits will be consumed. So it's not it's not a money, we don't charge you anything. So it's just conceptually the credit here, the concept of this, uh, concept of this credit, it's just saying just a concept, it's not, it's not a money. So you don't have to care about the credits. If you are lack of the credit, you can, no, you can you, you can just request request us via email. So then we are going to give you more credits. So the compression um, the process can be up take up to five minutes. So just wait for up to five minutes. Okay, we have one. Okay. There's one question. Do you have support for recurrent and then actually um this is a very good question. 
because in the in this demo or in our service, we actually support only computer vision models, which means the model, if you want to compress your model, the model is supposed to have conv 2 d layer in your model. So, well, we only currently we only support computer vision models. Yeah. So James Lou say that how do we evaluate compression performance? Well, you will see. Yeah, the compression performance will soon appear after this compression is done. So, and then one more thing: how do we evaluate the compression performance? Well, there are several ways to measure the compression performance. First. FH classification model, there can be an accurate drop. So, and second, uh, make it make it, make it more, much much simpler. We have two models before the compression, after the compression. So basically, we have you have to compare before and after. You if you want to see the performance of the compression, right? So what you can measure. The accuracy, if it's if classification, the accuracy of the post layers and inference speed of post layers and number of parameters in post layers and like that and, and the flops, the floating point operations per second in post layers. And so we can evaluate each matrix for the post layers. And most important thing is that why we do this, the reason why I do all of these things is to attain small AI model. When I say small, it's, it means a, a little bit different than usual term. When I say small, it doesn't mean the size actually. It means faster AI model. When it, you know, when it comes to small or tiny devices, the problem here is not a storage, you know, even with small USB USB drive, you can have several gigabytes or ter it's not a ter terabyte, several or several decades of gigabytes in US small USB. So the story is it does not matter. What it matters is the speed of running, running speed of the model. So why we do the reason why we do all of these things is um, it's a trade-off. We we can endure. We can we can we can um, give the trade off for one to three accurate drop. That's fine. That um, if we can have two times, four times, or even eight times inference speed increment, then one or two percent accurate, or one or one or three percent accuracy, one or one sorry, one or three percent point accurate drop. It's fine. Some customers customers will say that, right? So here is the performance is not actually it's not about accuracy. Yeah, we give um, a little room for the accuracy drop, and we take higher room for the inference speed. That's what we want. So I'm not sure it's a it was a good answer for you, James. Look how we how do we evaluate the compression performance? Yeah, usually. We take the accuracy and we want much more increment of the speed. Yeah, I hope I answer you well. So Yuki, yeah, uh, can we preview the accuracy drop? Preview accuracy drop, actually, um, we can simulate it, you know, you can simulate the accuracy drop, but what we pursue is to show the real thing first. So it, there's no function here. There's no function here in accurate drop. But you know, what you can what you, what, what, you, what you can keep in your mind is it's not about training. It does not take several days or, or several weeks it, because it's not training. You, you don't have data set here. You just need several minutes, several five minutes or several minutes. So just one single experiment does not take too long time. So, which means you don't, in this case, you don't actually need a preview for the accuracy drop because you can see the real accuracy drop 
after the compression within just a few minutes. After you see the actress drop or the performance changes after the compression, you can just go back to the first stage and re repeat the experiment with just a small change of the configurations. And the whole feedback loop will not take several weeks. It just takes several minutes. So maybe it's the same to see the preview of the actress drop, I think. And uh, I think it's get it, it takes longer than I expect. It's not, yeah, it's supposed to finish it in this stage, but yeah. And Eugene, can Nespresso compress floating point 32 models into eight and eight, eight models? Actually, that's called quantization, and we don't have quantizations quantizations and function here. Um, the reason why here, the reason we didn't have an adapted the quantization model yet here is what I explained before. The pruning and filter decomposition are mainly two methods that can run um, without the data set. And you can you can make you can take care of the actress drop in your own hands. So if you use the floating point 32, if you use the quantization from, from floating point 32 and into INT8, you will you will you will see the severe actress drop if you don't retrain your retrain from the scratch your model, you will see the several severe, there will be severe actress drop. So in our case. We adapted printing and filter the composition first, rather than quantizations. Uh, if the performance of a compressed model is not as good as base model, how do you troubleshoot that? You know, you know, I say I told you that the process can take up to several minutes, not on hours. So once you attain, once you once the compressor give you um, the bad performance model you just go back to the previous stage and reconfigurate the layer, the, the configuration numbers in these layers. If you, if you just click this layer and give them a ratio, like for example, 0 0.1, and the performance is not that bad. If the, if the performance of this result is that bad, you just go back to the previous stage and don't touch this layer, just touch the other layers. And the whole feedback loop will not take that long, longer time. So that's our purpose. Yeah, you, you, you have to keep in mind that it's not a training. So it will finish sooner or later. And I think this is, it just takes quite longer than I expected. You're supposed to be finished just before. So let me let me try the other things. Let me try. Oh, there are quite a lot of questions. That's very good. Thank you, everyone. Everyone. Yeah, the compression is done. Actually, it I think it takes more than five minutes, but you know, it's actually fifth, several minutes. So you see, this is a result. And you see there's not that much difference between between the compression and after the compression. And you know why? I just give just one, you know, I just give very short, very small printing ratios in just one single small layers, okay? But you, you see the trainable part, number of training parameters are very, you see that it's actually reduced in a very small size, right? They are different, but in it's not that much different. In, in that case, you can expect that the accuracy, accuracy of these two models are not going to that different, right? And close it. You can come, you can, you can compare in the stru structures. Neutron, neutron dot here. Neutron dot, no, 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 neutron. Ready? Neutron, sorry. 
compare, for example, like that, you open, open model. And there is a resonant 15. The model was resonant 15. Resonant, resonant 15. Oh, it's a compressed one. It's by side, side. So resonant 50, the original one is left one and the, and the compressed one is the right one. You see the structure, every structure, every elements of this structure are the same, everything's the same, but you see the combo 2D layers, you see the shape of combo 2D layer are very small, very, very different. It's just a small amount of it, different. Three by three by three by 64, and right side, the compressed one, three by three by three by 58. Okay, and everything, uh, the, every other elements are the same. Just just these layers, the shape of these layers are changed. So in this case, you can imagine, you can imagine that the two, the, the two models, the output, the accuracy or whatever, the out performance of these two models will not, uh, um, they, are, they are not going to adapt that bit different, right? But if you give them premier, high printing ratios for each, every layers, then the accuracy drop or whatever, the shape or the performance of these two models will be very different. different. So you have, you can manage, actually you can deal with by, it's like a handler. It's like a handler. You can give higher printing ratio or low printing ratios for many layers or a small number of layers. You can deal with the degree of pruning. So this is how you can deal with the, the, the our compressor. So let me take the question and answers. James Lu, do you have some figure to show your compressed model performance, model compression versus performance degradation ratio for famous network? Do you have some figures to show your compressor? Actually, I have, I have like, I have code rather than a figure. I'm going to give you, because I don't have much time left. I'm going to give you um, the, the two codes to, you can, you can, you can actually try it. I'm going to give you these two codes. Yes, they, they are both collab code. One, the first one is the Keras code. The second one is PyTorch code. So in, if you open the code, I'm give you the I'm going to give you the link. So actually in this code, you will you will see see the what the compression versus what the performance degradation ratio. So you will see the table, the final stage of final output of the of this code will produce the table. So you you will see you will check the table here and just middle of the stage, middle of the code, you see the go to net MPTK actually. Um, there's a, this is a very simple model, very simple Keras model. And the, the mission here is once you have the Keras model and go to the MPTK, it means Nespresso compression toolkit or Nespresso compressor and upload, you upload this model and download the compressed model and move on, move on to the, to the next course. So I think you will see the result using this code. I'm going to give you, I'm going to share this code. Share in this, where's chat room? Chat, chat, chat. Yeah, has code and PyTorch code. Both of them have the same model structure and every code have the same, but you know, the frameworks are just frameworks are different for your understanding. PyTorch, the same. Yeah, sorry, we don't, we don't have much time left. So I hope this will help this helps. For example, if you compress which is 19 by factor of three, then performance drop by 5%. Five, 5%. Five uh, actually, actually it'd be better if you can expect before the experiment, but you know, nobody knows the result. 
if you don't have ex experiment. So we need to experiment for the prediction. So what you are, you are asking here is actually a prediction, right? If you compress VG19 by factor of three, you mean, I don't know the meaning of the three here, but any, anyway, I think it's a, some kind of pre ratio, right? Then performance drop 5% point, yeah. It, it will be happy for everyone if we have that kind of function, but actually we don't have, we don't have. All you can do is just do, conduct the experiment by yourself. And you know, here, the experiment will not take several days. So you just try it, test it, to see, download your model and see the performance and go back to where you were before in the study at the first stage. So I recommend you to look. I recommend you to the run on the feedback group. Yeah. So Mr. Kia Kobayashi, how much we can trust recommendation feature? Does it consider a crisp drop or an inference speed is considered? Um, well, actually we have here, how can we trust recommendation? Actually, you can, you, 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 it, it does not mean you have to trust it, you know? It, it, it's not about trusting something. It's just for convenience. Oh, sorry, let's just get session, it's expired. You know, when you when it comes to the model model compressor, model compressor models, click I can go by that and like tracker, pruning channel index, pruning. Oh, there is no recommendation function here. Sorry, return on pruning. You know, we have recommendation here function. And the print the setup structural layer adapted sparsity for the magnetic base print. Um, you can you can research you can find the paper. Actually, you can find the paper in the Google Scholar. It's the same name, SLAP, SLAM, structural layer adaptive sparsity for the magnetic base print. There, there, they actually they recommend the printing ratios, but nobody can guarantee it. You know, in AI engineering, nobody can get it guarantee before you re actually see the results. No, you, you, don't, you don't have, you, sh you should not trust anything. Not, not for our, even for our solutions, but you don't have, you should not trust before you see the results. Yeah, that's how we, that's how the AI model works. So the point here is let's try to, let's try to produce the end re experimental result as fast as possible and as simple as possible. And once you attain the result in your hands, then you can make other, you can make further decisions based on the result. But before you have the result, no, don't trust anything, not even for our, our solution, but don't trust any other solution before you have their concrete, concrete result, experimental result on your hand. Yeah, I don't recommend that. So what is the overall principle here to compress? Um, should we compress early layers more or layer layers to keep the performance as good as possible? There are several questions here, but the point here is, is it depends. It depends on the your situation. And the, each, every cli clients have different requirements. Some clients can, can endure like 10% point accuracy drop or some, some clients, for example, in the financial industry, they want. They don't want. They don't want any accuracy drop. They don't allow any accuracy drop. Then they have different restrictions. So it depends. Depends on the clients, clients requirements. So, so your your point is, how do we know? I think. I think your point is, how do we know which layer to compress more, or which layer to compress less, or which printing ratio? What kind of numbers? 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.5. Where is the principle to decide how to compress here, right? I think if my understanding is correct, um, you say, what is the overall principle here to compress? 
Uh, should we compress all the layers more? I don't know. Or layer layers more? Well, well, I don't know. The the one we have the, the one hint we have here is, you know, the latency latency wise. I'm sorry, layer wise latency. You know, the actual actual. You know, these one one three point three three microseconds and two or two point point or oh, oh, microseconds, these are all actually measured in the Raspberry Pi zero, no, Raspberry Pi three B plus. The layer wise latency of this model was actually measured on real device. It's not a simulation, you know? It means that this layer will take much longer time to calculate or if this layer can have much more weight, much more number, much more number of parameters than the other layers. So, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to like increase your inference speed here, you find you you find the highest. You see here, over the thousand, right? Higher, you touch it. It will be better for it. Will be would you be better for you touch the high? the sl slowest one first, but it's not an answer. You know, it's, it's just, just a hint. And one, for example, once I touch, once I touch this model and give this kind of three, lay, lay, this kind of um, 0 0.53 training ratio here, there can be severe acres drop, or there can be no acres drop, or there can be like increasement of accuracy. There, so I don't know, I don't know why, and I don't know how here. So here you have, what you have is just a hint, but it's not an answer. So I'm sorry, I can give you an answer here or principle here. So what you can do is to try and error, um, do the experiment by yourself, by uploading your model and, and see the result. And if the result is fine, that's fine. But if the result is not satisfiable, then come back and just just try the, the next the next iteration. So that's the principle we have actually. So yeah, yeah, and actually we have six minutes left. Um, one more thing here is the principle here i think many of you feel very 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 uncomfortable for in this step because i think it's because we don't we we provide us our solution and we do not provide a principle to follow like or guide so which layer should be pruned more or which layer should be pruned less the kind of guidance you know um, in this point, um, we cannot, it's, it's not, actually it's not our hand, it's out of our hand. So we cannot, we cannot um, strictly predict what we don't have yet. So what you can do is make it, make your experiment cycle much faster. And what you can, what you can do is making your experiment cycle, which is simpler. That's all we can do. And we cannot, we cannot guarantee um, what we will get. Just clicking some layers, we cannot guarantee what you will get as a result, because this isn't for your experiment. So yeah, that's all, that's my, that's my answer here. And I'm sorry for you. I'm so, I'm sorry not to bring the model searcher and model launcher. As I told you before, the model launcher will be open in public in the mid of July in this year. So two or three weeks later, the model you're you're going to use the model launcher. And for the model searcher, um, once you have model search, model search, they have the same here. Uh, once you for, for this case, the model searcher, you see the address, address are different, right? Once you visit the model searcher, um, even though you have registered in the model searcher, we cannot give you our resource immediately. 
you know, the comp for the compressor, the compressor does not consume any GPU resources or any data set resources. So we we wanted to make it simpler. We wanted to make it lighter, um, as lighter as possible, as light as possible for many, many custom, many clients and many customers. But when it comes to the model searcher, it takes the GPU resource, it takes the data set, and it takes a lot of resources to train, to actually perform the neural architecture search aware in the hardware specs. So once you register in model searcher, um, you are in the queue. You are going to you are going to in the queue, user queue. So you are, we are we have our GPU resources in our we are our server. So we are going to assign your your GPU resource um, one by one in the queue. First one, first to serve, right? And that's actually not for just our case. And many AI AI services have the same restriction once they use the GPU resource, we cannot publicly open and we, we cannot support, we cannot provide in the, for the hundreds or thousands of users at the same time, it's not possible. So we made the compressor as light as possible, even though it has some kind of limitations or some in the, some features, yeah. Yeah, that's the current stage we have and let me check if there is more questions. No. Okay. Um, and this is our demo. And thank you for watching. Let me go back to the. Yeah. Let me go back to the slide. And let me wrap up the slide here. Um, I first introduced our our Nota AI, and the concept of how do we aware. What the, what is the hardware aware in AI model optimization? And I introduced Nota DMS, driving with train system, and Nota ITS, intelligent transportation system, and the concept of on device AI and the usability and the usage, the utility of on device AI, and the reason why we are doing all of these things, and the mission we have in informer statement and a former statement. In former, we have mission of hardware aware AI model optimization and informer statement we are we make small AI model for small devices and point here the small means does not it does not mean the size actually it means inference time or or the lightness of the model more than the size it takes in the storage and all the presentation and tutorials here will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. If you are interested in, you can share it with other people, your friends. And for the Tiny ML yeah, forum, Tiny ML group. And thank you for giving me the chance to give the presentation. And I hope we can make this kind of sharing sharing um, event, even though it's very short period of time, just one hour. Yeah. And thank you for all your support. And thank you for all you have to participate in this in the morning time. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks very much, Eric. That was great. Uh, and I really appreciate you getting through all the, the questions. And I just have to wrap up thanking our tiny machine learning strategic partners um, and a number of them, you know, kind of I'll show some of the uh, their full slides, uh, giving you some more detail and links for a number of those companies. Um, at both the, all the different strategic partner levels. Um, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a whole series of these deep dive events. Uh, you can find the schedule on tinyml.org and just look for the page with the auto ML deep dives. Uh, they have links for all of them to sign up. Make sure you sign up and, uh, and take a look. In any case, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it and hope you are really enjoying learning more about AutoML. If you ever have follow-up questions or there's other topics you'd like to see the Auto Machine Learning Working Group of TinyML uh, look into, uh, there is a forum groups at on tinyml.org. There's places you can post your questions. Um, and if, uh, or if you have topics or suggestions, uh, please post them there and we will... Uh, we definitely check them and keep an eye on that stuff and we'd be happy to hear from you. So thanks very much, everyone. Have a great day.